Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. Now you can see the price of Bitcoin, we're at $443 per Bitcoin or you can say that the dollar has lost 99.9 .9 whatever percent of its value against the Bitcoin. It just depends on how you want to look at it. Now uh, I apologize for not doing videos. Uh, I have many other projects that I work on and that's the main reason I haven't followed up. The other reason is I didn't do a lot of videos during the last correction phase. That was when we went from about a high of 30 something corrected down to I think two or so roughly. And of course we had the run up. We went to that 266 price and then I did some videos pretty much stop doing them. The reason why is because I've already said everything that needs to be said about the Bitcoin. The price is going to prove the point and of course we can see the price has proven the point. Now we're going to go and look at some of the mainstream commentary and it's just as inane today as it was two or three years ago when we first started talking about this. Now no one can really be that stupid. These people aren't stupid. They're obviously have financial interests involved but we can see that the price of the Bitcoin has proven them all wrong again it will continue to prove them wrong again and again and again and uh, the proof of the success of the Bitcoin is in the price and that's how free markets work um, now at five hundred dollars the market cap of the Bitcoin still only about five billion dollars that's a tiny tiny market share uh, the other cryptos have not caught up I think the Litecoin's worth a few bucks so the bulk of the emphasis has gone into Bitcoin but again as far as market cap as far as the amount of money that's out there floating around uh, it's still just a pittance so we're in the bull phase now everybody's wondering where is the end of this this bull phase and uh, I can't say I can only speculate now you can see that the the last recovery phase was about two years and it ran about tenfold this one is about half that time and will it roll run twentyfold I don't know if we have a tenfold repeat we've actually seen it more than three times uh, actually we've seen it three times we had the run to 30 cents uh, and we went from there to three dollars we went to thirty dollars went nearly three hundred dollars uh, three thousand is that going to be the next point it very very likely could be that uh, the next peak we'll say blow off top you can see it in the candlesticks the uh, blow off top is is marked by these candlesticks not so much on this one it was if you go to a different time frame it doesn't spend a lot of time at that point uh, clearly this isn't the top yet um, it's uh, possibly going to be a top but I think we have a ways to run before the top now one of the reasons I say that is because of the market depth now what this is is group by price this is clarkmoody.com and it's group by price with a thousand rows to display so what this gives us is the market depth now you can see that below five hundred dollars there's really only about sixty five hundred bitcoins offered now that number doesn't really jump up to ten thousand until we get all the way up to about a thousand in price and the absolute cap of all of the bitcoins offered at any price on Mt. Gox is about 13,858 bitcoins. Now if you remember in my past videos a long time back uh, we had as many as 50,000 we had a lot of bitcoins offered. Now on the other hand the, the demand side you can see uh, we're not going to go for bitcoins uh, uh, bid at you know a penny or something like that but we'll do realistic bids so let's take the price of 30 after all that was the last top that we had before this recent top so we'll say these are honest bids $30 is a pretty decent bid for a Bitcoin and you can see 
we've got 153,000. This is just Mt. Gox. Now remember, Mt. Gox is just one exchange. It's the primary exchange. It doesn't have to be the primary exchange, but it is the primary exchange. And therefore, it tends to set the price. But we have 154,000 bitcoins bid at a $30 price. That's over 10 times the amount of bitcoins that are offered uh, total at any price. So there is a very small amount of bitcoins offered. Now, my bitcoins, for a very long time, I had a lot of bitcoins stolen. I gambled with some bitcoins. Those got stolen. I had wallet breaches and stuff like that. But I also took a lot of bitcoins, locked them in a wallet, put them on a USB stick, took them offline, and uh, didn't spend a lot of money on them at the time, but uh, they're gaining in value. So let's look at some of the recent FUD. And it's just, again, it's just downright silly. Um, again, I've covered a lot of these arguments. There's simply no excuse for people who plead ignorance to these arguments all the arguments have been covered there's there's no reason for people to be ignorant of these in Bitcoin report volume 10 I encourage to you to watch that I explained that the Bitcoin is actually cryptocurrencies are actually an idea and it's an idea whose time has come you can't stop an idea that's the thing an idea is more powerful than all the armies on earth an idea whose time has come I covered in bitcoins and borders the fact that the Bitcoin has the ability to defeat capital controls that is an absolutely essential element in the Bitcoin because as we see now in Venezuela with the socialist madmen in that country and uh, we have uh, the nutcases that are running the EU uh, we have uh, central planners in the United States. We have lunatics in Japan. And so they're, they're crazy people running governments. You certainly don't want your money, your wealth, your investments to be controlled by governments. And you certainly want to have the ability to move your wealth from a jurisdiction that is controlled by dangerous madmen who want to confiscate your wealth. The Bitcoin is the first thing that has ever existed in the history of the world that gives you that ability to move your money from country to country. Uh, you can put your wallet in the cloud. You can attach it to an email. Uh, you could have a hundred thousand bitcoins as an email attachment and it's in a locked encrypted wallet only you know the password to you go and uh, go through the naked body scanners or whatever is the borders of your jurisdiction of whatever totalitarian country you live in go to a more free country and uh, take your memorized password with you download your email and get your Bitcoin so that's the reality of it things have fundamentally changed I've compared the Bitcoin to the printing press uh, fundamentally changed the world it is fundamentally changing the world but that's let's listen to some of the incredible ignorance that still goes on. Here's an interview from, uh, this is a article that's posted on the blog from CNBC or CNBS as people call it. Let's just listen to what these people have to say. I'm going to jump in and comment on, on these. Rise of the reports the Chinese are A, active users and B, that Chinese uh, television has done stories about Bitcoin. Chinese television is government television, right? So if they're doing stories... Oh no, we don't have government television here. Oh, oh no, no, no. This th this isn't government television. Yeah, this is a. Uh, oh yeah, government television. Is about it. You know that that means that maybe the Chinese government doesn't necessarily support it, but it's not against it. Right, right. What what about Bitcoin, Perry? Uh, tell me what you're seeing. First of all, are they trading Bitcoin, the company? Perry, are they trading Bitcoin, the company? Perry, am I really the dumbest person on the face of the earth? Is it possible to be dumber than I am, Perry? Uh, on second market, or how, how does it work? Well, you know, second market, um, or Bitcoin is not a company. It is a... It's a uh, currency. It's a currency and a transaction network. So essentially... Think Are of they it, using it for the secondary market? So... Uh, what, the secondary stock market? Uh, why don't you learn something about what you're talking about before you open your mouth? You're 
a public disgrace. Second Market is a platform where we have incubated an investment vehicle that enables people to invest in Bitcoin. And so that vehicle is called the Bitcoin Investment Trust. It's the first time a security has been created to essentially hold Bitcoin to enable people to invest in Bitcoin. No, so we got Bitcoin derivatives. No thanks, I'll keep my Bitcoins. And that is on Second Market. You were skeptical initially. I was skeptical. I heard about Bitcoin in 2011 and like everybody, I said, this, is, this can't be. It's a Ponzi scheme, it's a tulip bubble. And you spend the time digging in and what you realize is as a currency, it's beautiful. It's a great store of value. And as a transaction network, it has the potential to change the way that money moves around the world. Western Union, MoneyGram, Swift, all these businesses. I do. Uh, so a lot of merchants now are accepting Bitcoin. So the, from an adoption perspective, it is, it's off the chart. But you have a trading vehicle that you you uh, trade now. So essentially what we did was we created um, like a private ETF. And trading vehicle. It's very important that we have trading vehicles because we've got to have a way to loot the people's savings. Uh, after all, this is Wall Street. And so it's fashions like the, the Spider Gold GLD, because for anybody who tries to invest in Bitcoin, what they realize, it's really hard to acquire large dollar amounts. And then you have to worry about how do you custody or safe keep them. So Second Market handles that through a vehicle. It's audited by ENY. We're regulated. It's very kind of safe, easy way to get involved. OK, I get it. Virtual agnostic currency. But for the, a currency to have value, you've got a buyer and a seller that agree on what that value is. What is the intrinsic value of a Bitcoin? You called it a store of value. What the what buyer is? and seller agree on. What, what, when you're in prison, what's the value of a cigarette that you buy and sell? Right? Boy, I wish they'd find out. I mean, how do you determine <laughs> that, I don't know, right? Bill, what is the value? <laughs> I mean, it's no different, right? And, and, uh, but for this to keep going higher, the right. supply has to remain constant then of Bitcoin. No, Bitcoins do get created. I mean, there, there's a, a, some version of the Fed out there related to servers, etc. Right, so there's... There's uh, some version of the Fed out there for Bitcoins. Well, I, I guess she's the most educated one. 21 million that will be created for the next 100 years. About 11.9 million are out there right now. So you have a predictable, um, a limited number of Bitcoin that will be released into the wild. And so from that perspective, you don't have the risk that a government is going to debase the currency or destroy the currency. How, what kind of investor is buying and selling the investment trust? It's, been, it's very People who don't trust your racket. We're seeing three groups of investors. Technology entrepreneurs who within their own businesses are starting to adopt Bitcoin are very excited about it. Family offices are getting involved. They're taking a portion of their gold allocation and putting into Bitcoin, which is, you know, again, certainly a very risky investment. And then lastly, Wall Street professionals are starting to invest their personal money, which I think is a precursor to Wall Street coming in, into Bitcoin in a big way. Ten seconds. I think it's... Uh, Chinese, we can't be, you know, sure that it's happening, but it's intuitive. They're desperate for places to invest because the market there is the stock market there is too small. Interest rates are fixed. They're trying to put money someplace, and they're also trying to get money out of the country because of capital control. Right. Okay, so there's uh, one set of geniuses on CNBC. Now let's watch Peter Schiff. This is a guy that I actually have some respect for. Uh, as far as Bitcoin, we're talking completely clueless. On Squawk Box this morning, the Winklevoss twins, they said that Bitcoin is actually gold 2.0. Agree or disagree? <laughs> no, I think, look, it, I, to me, it looks like a modern-day tulip mania. I mean, the fact that there are people in the hard money community that have embraced a uh, uh, Bitcoin. Look, a, a bubble is a bubble, whether it was the dot-com or the real estate bubble. There's a bubble in Bitcoins. I think the reason that people are buying Bitcoins is because they think they're going to make money. They think the price is going to go up, and the price probably will go up. It'll okay, so that's Peter's definition of a bubble. That's actually not the definition of a bubble. A bubble does not just consist of people buying uh, because they think they're going to make money. Uh, you can have an investment where a lot of people are buying because they think they're going to make money because they think they're investing in something that's undervalued. That doesn't mean it's a bubble because they are investing uh, to make money. A bubble is something where people are only investing because they think they're going to sell it to somebody else at a higher price. They don't believe in what they're investing in. They just believe they can flip it and make more money. That's not Bitcoin. It'll keep going up until it implodes. And a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money in Bitcoins. A small number of people will make a lot of money. Now, we heard that argument on the way up to 30. We heard that argument on the way up to 266. 
We heard that argument. We're hearing it again. Now, with the distribution that's occurred, there's a lot of people like me who just thrown their Bitcoins in a wallet, locked it up, and said, forget it. But there are also a lot of people who bought and sold, lost and won. Uh, but the Bitcoin distribution ownership is wider and wider than it's ever been. Uh, most of the people, the vast majority of early adopters, uh, are way in the black as far as Bitcoin. We heard the same arguments when it hit 30. We heard the same arguments when it went up to nearly 300. We're hearing the same arguments again. And a larger and larger number of people are making money. It's not a Ponzi scheme and it's not a bubble. But it will be paid for by a, a much greater number of people who, who lose because they come in at the end of, of the pyramid scheme. Whether we're at that end now or whether it's going to keep going on for months or years, I don't know. I mean, you can play the game if you want, but I don't see bitcoins as an alternative to gold. Now, he called it a pyramid scheme. I've addressed this before. Bitcoin is not a pyramid scheme. A pyramid scheme is paying off older investors with the proceeds from new investors. There is no uh, fundamental earning uh, power to the investment. Now, again, Bitcoin is never marketed. It's not said to be an investment. No one has put Bitcoin forth as an investment. It would be like comparing gold and saying gold is a pyramid scheme. Well, gold's not a pyramid scheme because it doesn't pay any interest. It doesn't promise any returns. It just promises appreciation. And uh, of course, gold doesn't make any promises. And that's why uh, there's nobody really marketing physical gold, of course, because it's a threat to their corrupt bankster system as well. So Peter Schiff is wrong, 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 and wrong. And uh, he says it's not like gold. Well, it, it's exactly like gold. It's, it is designed uh, as gold with a basis of mining all of the uh, principles that were poured into Bitcoin by the designers, whether it's Satoshi, we don't know who. Uh, it's based on gold. The only difference is that uh, gold is a physical store of value. Uh, that's what gold has as a superior form of money. It is a store of value, whereas Bitcoin, uh, it has so far held up as a store of value, even superior to gold so far. But it is a superior medium of exchange. Uh, gold just does not compare to Bitcoin when we're talking about a medium of exchange. It, that, that, it is not a modern day gold standard. Right? All right. If anything, they're modern day alchemists, but you can't make gold uh, digitally. It, it's no better than a fiat currency. And when people talk about the fact that there's a finite supply of bitcoins, you can break your bitcoin down into many, many pieces. So there's plenty of bitcoins for everyone. Uh, certainly, if the price. So, did you hear that? He literally doesn't even get it. The. A fiat currency, the smallest denomination of your fiat currency, is a penny. And what's happening with your fiat currency is that the pennies aren't going to be able to be made anymore because what they're made out of is worth more than a penny itself. So the dollar or pennies or any denomination of dollars are becoming worth less and less and less every day as the government debases them. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is becoming worth more and more and more. And the criticism against it is that, well, it's going to be too scarce. Well, we know that problem was solved because it's divis divisible to so many decimal places. So what that means is a Bitcoin, of course, is now uh, the same, or a bit cent or a bit mini cent or whatever you want to call it, is now the same as a Bitcoin was in the past. This is a currency that is appreciating in value. I cannot believe that Peter Schiff can't comprehend this. It keeps going up, but I don't think it's going to it's going to end up being a a a, a source of commerce for the world. I, I think right now it is it is it is a source of gambling, uh, and, and I think I think people will lose a lot of money. But again, as I said, I don't know where the top is. I never know where the top is, but I think I have a pretty good uh, vision when it comes to seeing bubbles, and you know I certainly see one uh, in in bitcoins. So. That's the summary from Peter Schiff, completely clueless. He just doesn't understand anything about Bitcoin. I have a hard time believing that Peter Schiff is that ignorant about Bitcoin, but uh, maybe he is. 
but again, here's a quote from the blog of BitcoinChannel.com. Uh, I put it in the random quote section, but it, it is a quote that should stay up. This is the vision of Jay Orland Grab from back in the early 90s, and he was speaking to a undercover agent at the NSA who was telling him about the promise of Bitcoin. He said, at any rate, the spook spoke the truth. Cryptology represents the future of privacy and more. By implication, cryptology also represents the future of money and the future of banking and finance. By money, I mean the medium of exchange, the institutional mechanisms for making transactions, whether by cash, check, debit card, or other electronic transfer. Given the choice between intersecting with a monetary system that leaves a detailed electronic trail of all one's financial activities and a parallel system that ensures anonymity and privacy, people will opt for the latter. Moreover, they will demand the latter because the current monetary system is being turned into the principal instrument of surveillance and control by tyrannical elements in Western governments. J. Orlin Grab. Now, people are voting with their feet against the tyrannical elements of Western governments. And as I've said before in uh, Bitcoin, an idea whose time has come, Bitcoin is like the printing press. The printing press marked the end of a 1,500-year reign of the Catholic Church, a tyrannical reign of bloodshed and uh, dark ages. But uh, the idea was that the Bible could be printed and they could not control it. People could read it for themselves to find out what it meant and their monopoly was over. The same thing is with the Bitcoin. Their monopoly is over. It's all over, but the shouting, even if the Bitcoin fails, the idea of cryptocurrencies that are anonymous, that cannot be controlled by governments, uh, that idea will never go away. And these tyrannical elements in Western governments are going to go away. And we'll talk to you next time.